Hi everybody, this is Chris. This is Matt. And today we're going to be talking about two games, because one of them was incredibly short. <laughs> yeah. So, we're going to be talking about the Loom and Dig. I think we'll start with Loom first. Yeah, let's talk about Loom, because I, I, I beat Loom and I didn't beat the Dig. Uh, so, I'll have more, at least I'll have more to say on Loom. Right. Um... Where do you want to start with Loom, other than it's incredibly short? I feel like we should save that for a little bit. I think, you know, I was thinking about Loom this morning, and I think what I want to tell people is uh, before you you listen to it, what we have to say about it, if you haven't played it, like, just shut this off and just go, go play it, because <laughs> we're going to complain about it, and I feel like the experience of of loom is is so great that you shouldn't let us steal it from you by listening to our complaints about it because right uh, because it's one of those games that you'll like wish you could play again for the first time yes it the my biggest complaint about it is three hours is that it's right. a three hour game and we're not joking about that it was intended to be a trilogy they never did the second two um so sort of my biggest complaint is also going to be my biggest compliment. I'd love Telltale to buy this license like yes. tomorrow and get us the rest of the game. Yeah, the world in, in Loom is so good and so like it's beautiful and it's strange and it, it's really, really a good. You want to know more about it. You, yeah. You want to dig in. You want to find out. It's odd, like, The Dig was a complete game, but Loom is a better game. Yeah, Loom is definitely more just creative, and I don't know, it's it's an experience more, more than a game. Well, and it, with the music system, it changed the sort of structure of how we think of puzzle games. Because you're not collecting items as much as you're collecting uh magic system spells yeah. and then once you have them you can kind of use them wherever and yeah so maybe we should just talk real briefly about like the the plot and the world so you're, you're a weaver mm -hmm. so there's like different races right is that how you would describe it races is a good way to describe it um i think guilds is kind of how they refer to them in the game they call them guilds but I feel like that's not wholly accurate. Like th yeah. they definitely have a different, um, definitely different nationalities at bare minimum. But the yeah. weavers are their own spell system, for lack of a better way to describe it. They're yeah. they're their own creatures. Because if you, uh, okay, here's the other thing. This is your last warning to leave. There is no way to talk about puzzle games without spoiling the game. Yes, yeah. This is a three-hour game. You cannot fail at it. We'll talk about fail states later. You will not have a hard time with this game, even on a hard difficulty. And it's worth, like, the five bucks, or if you can find it on sale for a couple bucks, it's worth spending it to learn more about the world. It's so good. Um definitely but we're gonna hear it so anyway last spoiler alert like if you pull back the hood on the weavers they kill people yeah which is really neat it is none, none of the other uh the other races are largely just like human yeah but the weavers are a little different and they're you know yeah, the weavers weavers have something different going on which is cool and okay um, i'm messing with my mic here so if i'm all clippy is probably what's going to happen yeah you sound fine Boop. um <clears throat> but anyway so so you're in this guild of weavers and like for some reason uh which i'm not 100 percent clear on uh you can use musical notes string together musical notes to interact with the world to basically cast spells okay that i wasn't... don't know how those are related I was going to say, that wasn't what I thought you were going to say 
the difference was. Um, <laughs> the thing I thought you weren't going to understand is why he was the outcast. I'm like, did you not listen to the half hour oh, audio no. drama? <laughs> no, no, no. Just like the fundamental idea is, is strange, but it's great. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't have beef with it. It's just like, I don't understand the relationship between weaving and, and making musical spells, but whatever, you know. Well, this is where we we didn't get to see enough of the other guilds, and that was supposed to be what the rest of it was. So I don't know if music is magic in this game world, period, and just oh, yeah. these deal with weaving, and maybe there's... And I think that's what it was supposed to be from reading online, like the, the metalsmiths were supposed to be drumming. And oh, so gotcha. That's where, please, somebody go finish this. Somebody pick this up and let us dig more into this world um yeah the humor is very british right got... i like i really like the voices too speaking mm -hmm. of british like I, the voice acting i thought was really good it is yeah um not amazing but very good i i yeah you know this was at a time where voice acting was new so you know put it in that context it was amazing for the time it's good for now yeah um, but yeah, the game world's great. The humor's good. Um, it's just short. And knowing that yeah. it was a $60 game. At I launch, know. I know. And it's like, I, I, I don't know. I I've can't got a justify bunch of, that. Yeah, it's it's too short. Like it, they, I don't know what the circumstances were behind that, but they should have, I don't know, done something. And like... At the end of the game, you can. It feels like they just ran out of steam, in my opinion. Well, I think they were setting up the game, so they were trying to get everything to the reveal, and then never. Nothing. There's no payoff, and and if you can't stand that in a game, if if that is enough to stop you, then no, don't go play the game. Um, yeah. But if you can enjoy the world for what it is and get this taste of this thing you want more of and you're willing to spend a buck or two at GOG or on uh, Steam, both are carrying it right now. Yep. It's definitely, I think it's worth playing mm -hmm. just just because it's cool to, like the artwork is really good and, yep. you know, it's it's fun. Like, it's, I don't know. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. It is fun. It is fun. And I think was this this was one of the first LucasArts games where the environments had a lot of depth. Like if you go back and play Maniac Mansion, yeah, or uh, uh, you know the other early LucasArts mm -hmm. games, uh, they're pretty flat. But in this one, you can go behind. Uh, you know, there's some depth. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, to the environment, which Maniac Mansion and a lot of the other games, it's like one still scene after another. Uh, and you can see that in like all the later LucasArts games are like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is where I think they finally got the scrum engine, which is what they use to make these games finally kicked into high gear. Um, it's also why I used the, the, the um, steam version to record because for some reason it, it doesn't send it through DOSBox or anything else. It sends it through a scum VM machine to play these in, on modern computers. Yeah. Which. Yeah. That threw me off the first time I went to save my game and I got like the VM pop up. Yeah. It's like this, this doesn't look right. So you're going to have to get a little comfortable with a, a sort of different environment to. If you're used to playing old games, these are going to be different. It's okay, it works, but yeah, heads up, I guess, is the sort of beginning and end of it. Um, so I mentioned the audio drama. Did you listen to it? Did you did you uh, go find it? I started to listen to it, but I, I didn't. <laughs> you couldn't get all the way through it. No, my attention span's terrible, so oh. I don't know. I don't know if it's me or the audio drama, but I just like. No, it's okay. Uh, Nina sometimes asks me to help her do something for knitting, like wind a ball of yarn or something. So if I've got time, I could just, we threw that on the background while I did some stuff for her. And we both just yeah. kind of were like, Whew. 
it, it sets up the story, but... <laughs> and the premise is, for the Weavers, no new children were being born. Mm. So one of the Weavers took it on herself to go to the sort of grand loom there that weaves existence and weave a baby in hmm. to create a new weaver. And that's you, right? And that's you. And so the old timers are like, this is not natural. We don't want this. And they banished that woman out of there and left you with uh, the person who's now a duck. Right. For some reason. <laughs> For some reason. Um, as you... Yeah, like you... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, as your teacher, and then I was going to stop. So go on. <laughs> you, you do get some of that. Uh, like, you don't have the sub subtitles on, but you get some of that from the, the dialogue. Yeah. You know, they, they say that you're basically kind of a turd mm -hmm. as, as a weaver. Uh, yeah. And it's because they wouldn't teach you. Like, yeah. They refused to teach you because it's prophesized that you're going to destroy the world. Right. And you kind of do. Sort of ish. Yeah. No, the like it's hard. I the, I'm going to tell you that I I didn't think the biggest. Well, the biggest problem was how short it was. But the other thing that really really bugged me about this game mm -hmm. was how easy they made the puzzles. Uh, because there are times that they basically like tell you how to solve the puzzles. Yes, it's not like a hint; it's just like in the dialogue, uh, and that really annoyed me because it was just like I get you built this beautiful world, blah 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 blah, but like don't steal what little game there is from me by making it so easy just because you're so committed to me enjoying this world that you know you don't want me to feel challenged. The, from the manual, like, if you're not sure how to proceed, remember the knowledge you need to continue the story is always available somewhere nearby. You don't need to save and restore your game frequently to ensure success. And I was like, that's an interesting promise. Like, I, I did not believe them when we started. But yes, they're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're never going to spend a lot of time going, hmm. <laughs> yeah, and like, I don't even... Like, I, I kind of like in these games that you can't die and it's not like a constant trial and error right. mess. Like, that's what makes these games great. But, like, don't... Like, the, the first time I remember it uh, was that you, like, go to a grave and there's this hint mm -hmm. about opening the sky. And you like, oh, like, okay, well, I can click on the sky and I can do my open spell. And then he just says, I like the view from the mountaintop better. Like, oh, you know, that's... That's not a puzzle. Right. Could be something. <laughs> I wonder what he means by mountain up. But yeah, just, just say like, oh, I, I wish I could see more of the sky or something. Like, give me, give me, let me think about it. Don't just tell me where to go. Well, and so I wonder how much of that is their dedication to having it be a game that everyone can get through so they can experience the whole world. And how much of it is this was supposed to be chapter one. This is the yeah. training chapter we never got to see the puzzles. Like, I, I wonder if that's what happened here. And I hope so, because that, I don't know. Right. There, there, there's several <laughs> times in the game where it does that. And it just like frustrated me so much because I want, like, I want to play a game. You like I don't bite want your to teeth just... into something. And yeah, no, yeah. there's nothing. The thing I think is interesting not that you ever would is that each time you play it again the music is supposedly randomized for what the spell notes are hmm. so on one hand you're seeing us solve the puzzle on the other hand you're not going to be able to memorize the magic notes you gotta record those but that yeah brings... that's no, oh, no. go ahead no. are you going to talk about the book of shadows because yes i'm going to talk about the book of shadows. <laughs> okay you, you go you, you go say, so there's I don't remember how many spells, but a lot of spells in the Book of Shadows, and you use like a third of them. Right. And the rest and is supposed to be in the next games. So, yeah. But that's that's a fair point. Like, if you play this, you need to find the Book of Shadows, like a PDF of it or something, because that's how you correlate uh, the spells that you're learning to like what they actually mm -hmm. do. 
because you don't get really all the context in the game. No. I didn't think you really need that the Book of Shadows. So no, you need to understand like this one's about untwisting things, and so you use this to untwist this. And if you see something else that's twisted, it also will untwist this. Um, yeah, which I really liked, except that at the end of the game, you kind of well. We've already acknowledged that we're spoiling yeah, this. Yeah, we're spoiling this, so go for it. Y you learn several new spells, but they're all contained in such a small One screen area that you don't need to correlate them to the Book of Shadows, and you don't need to know really what they do. All you no. need to know is, oh, okay, well, it gave me another spell. I got it. And you have to do that over and over again. Simon Says. There's, it's a Simon yeah. Says thing in the last battle. And yeah, that's some blue balls right there. Yeah. I did not like that no. ending. <laughs> and I actually, this puzzle really annoyed the crap out of me too, uh, because there's no reason for you to be doing this in the game. There's and one. You, right, to get the next note, right? No. So how did you get past the sheep dragon? Did you make them invisible or did you dye them green? I, I dyed them green, but... Oh. Uh, what I was saying is like this actually like dyeing this cloth right here. Yeah. There's, there's no reason for you to do this. You do need this spell. Yes. But the point is that, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, you have to do this to get the next note. Because if I walked around this whole like Island and the way that they gated this game is not, I don't know a better way they could have done it, but you see those grayed out notes? Mm -hmm. Like, you have to learn those. Yeah. You learn them by doing a certain number of actions. It's sort of your level system. The higher your yeah. level, the more notes you can bring in to weave. And I'm okay with that, but you're right. They used it as a gate. What was yeah. your least favorite puzzle in this game? Because I know what mine was. It made me um, angry. The least, My least favorite puzzle was... Um, well, you tell me yours while I think about it. The glass people. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that puzzle sucked because you were playing against the game engine. You were. With the one with the invisibility on the top of the tower. Yeah. So you yeah. go out and you cast invisibility on the top of the tower. You don't cast it on you, which would be the logical thing to do. Right. And you don't cast it next to that. So you cast invisibility up at the top of this tower, and then you walk visible all the way up to it, and then become invisible. I yeah, did it just because poor. I was like, for some reason, I think this is how the game engine is going to make this work. And walked in was like, sure enough, but there's no reason I should know that. Yep. Yeah, I tried to cast invisibility on myself and then go through the, mm -hmm. the glass hole or whatever it is. <laughs> the, <teleporter. laughs> the glass hole. <laughs> I don't know. Um, with the exception of that puzzle, though, I feel like this is a great, here's my intro to adventure games. If yeah, you've never be played perfect. one before, start with Loom. You'll get a sense of what it is. It's not long. You'll get the whole thing. You'll have an interesting world. You'll have a good time. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find out what LucasArts is about, this is probably the best place to start. I definitely agree. Like It's not as esoteric as Maniac Mansion, right. which is a great game. That was the first one I played. Mm -hmm. uh, my but I wish one, I had... I'm sorry, go on. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, my first one was Zach McCracken. Oh I don't think goodness. I ever finished that one. Zach McCracken. Zach McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. I don't know if I ever played that. It's old. Yeah, <laughs> it's old. you're old. I'm old. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll play it someday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was weird. It, it had a buckaroo bonsai feel to me. Um, okay. Yeah. It's sort of weird. So. But. Yeah. yeah. The way you interact with things is pretty simple too. Like you can see any anything that you can interact with gets mm -hmm. highlighted in the bottom there, and then you just like do your your magic spell on it, or and that's pretty much it. And like it's not most of the new mm -hmm. like open you're going to use all over, but when you learn a new riff or whatever mm -hmm. uh usually you're going to use it right away right also i did not care for that like i i want to critically think although I, I never thought about making the sheep invisible yeah can you do that yeah 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's a couple ways to solve some of the puzzles. Not many, but some. Um, and you will sometimes use a spell later, but not as often as you'd think. And I will yeah. say, like we were talking, you were talking about how you click on something and you see it appear at the bottom. You can put it on the highest difficulty and not see the notes light up on your staff. Just hear them if you're mm -hmm. good enough where your ear is good enough to actually pick up mine's not. Yeah. And then it will give you a slightly extended ending. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I was like, I thought about playing it, uh, but my ear is also not that good, but also you can play them over and over again. So to me, it would just seem like a mm -hmm. grind to, yeah. to figure them out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think it makes it harder. I don't think it, you, you don't have a lot of extra skin in the game because you can just click it over and over again. Right. To and just like out. noodle it out. And that didn't sound like very much fun. One thing I thought was interesting about both this and the dig, no opening menu. You go yeah, right. right into the game. Yeah. Um, which can, the first time I played didn't bother me, but the second time I'm like, wait a minute, how do I load my old game? <laughs> oh, oh, I just go into the menu, but it's not an obvious. It presumes like you're starting it up. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Like, there's a reference to the sky is opened. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, oh, yeah, that was the other thing. And after you read this, he says, the sky is opened. It's like, oh. And then you <laughs> try to open the sky. And he's like, I got to go on top of the mountain and Don't do it. Like, sky. oh, my God. Just try. Give me a give moment. Me a break. Even yeah. if you said, I got to be closer. Right. Something. Something that makes me think for a moment would have been, you know, a puzzle game that doesn't make you think. It's a walking simulator. It's a walking simulator right. from 1990. And um, it's a good one. Yeah. It's fun. Like, it's it's cool. Mm -hmm. the, like I said, it's it's one of those things that you'll wish you could experience it again for the first right. time. That's, that's overwhelmingly what I felt uh, when I went back and played this. Yeah. I have two more notes on this. One, my second least favorite puzzle <laughs> was the sword room where the guy's crafting the sword. And you got to go through this dialogue to get him to stop for a second and then cast a spell within a window. Yeah. And you weren't necessarily sure which spell to cast. So if you cast the wrong one, you've got to go through the whole dialogue again to get it to trigger and and go forward. Um yeah, there were some good, like, I thought the dragon puzzle was really good, because it was like a multi-step, and that's kind of what the yeah. later LucasArts games became, mm -hmm. like these multi-step puzzles where you have to, like, you know, observe the uh, reaction from the first thing to figure out the next thing to figure out the next thing. Right. Which, which was good, and, and that's when these games are at their best. Well, and that was the thing I was going to say about this game that I, I did absolutely love about it, is the puzzles, for lack of a better word always felt part of the game world they never felt yeah. like we're sticking this uh fit pieces together or this is obviously a puzzle for the sake of being a puzzle we're going to talk about that with the dig because that happened a lot in the dig yeah uh, everything felt natural and it, as part of what was happening so yeah that's a really good really good point yeah so, it gets up well it's a well-made game. And like, I really like the artwork, mm -hmm. um, even though it's old and like, you know, yeah, not a infinite amount of colors like you would expect, but it's like, look at like, that's really beautiful. No, it's one of the, well, it's one of the earliest VGA games because yeah. when it first started, it was EGA. Um, right. And so there's something people should know when they're looking for this game. There's two versions. There's the VGA, which you can find on GOG and steam. Um, and that's what I'm playing here, and it looks good. But there's also an EGA version out there, which still looks pretty good. I've, I've seen screenshots of it, and I might go back and play it again because it is only three hours. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand is the EGA version actually has more music, which hmm. for a game based on music seems like a failing to have pulled some of it out. Yeah, must but. have been space issues. Like they didn't want to put it on 100 floppy disks. They killed the tree. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, these little cutscenes are are really cool too. Yep. And I was I was really surprised uh, when there's a point like later in the game where where someone gets eaten by a dragon and it's like pretty that was violent, pretty violent. Seems, <laughs> the whole game seems it's so your like fault. vanilla it's completely your fault <laughs> yeah that was great i enjoyed that <laughs> i felt so bad for the guy i have in my notes yeah. just poor blacksmith <laughs> yeah that was sad like oh it really was um <laughs> I yeah, feel, I'm trying I, to think. I was going to say, I feel like there are missed opportunities for humor by just having some magic not work while making it not work in a funny way. Like, sometimes right. the spell just doesn't work. Where You should have had something like, it do what the magic does, but that's not what you want. And so it, it, there's a joke tied to that. They missed some opportunities there. Yeah, like um, if you try to open a grave, he says he says something that's kind of funny, but like that's a good example. Yeah, you know? there should be more of that. Yeah, that would have made it more puzzly too. If you're like, right? Because then you're not only trying stuff to like find the solutions, you're trying stuff to find the funny side adventures that right. would come out of it. And I think that could have been really cool, but missed opportunity. I agree. The whole thing felt very '90s. Yes, it's a very like '90s style game. Mm -hmm. It gave. I don't me... know exactly what that means, but that's exactly what it is. It flashed me on like all the other Lucas stuff from that time, the uh, Tiny Toons and Freakazoid, and I felt like it's right at home in that wheelhouse of 90s cartoon LucasArts Spielberg-y stuff. Yeah. Um, we should kind of talk about... Oh, that's The Dig. We'll talk about that. Because The Dig was actually a Spielberg story arc for his TV show. Yeah. And it was also written... Well, should we just switch to The Dig? I was going to say, do you have work. anything else you want to add about this? Uh, you know, a few failings aside, I'd say play mm -hmm. loom. It's good. Okay, so let me. I'm gonna throw this back up while I go and find that. Anything you want to start by talking about the dig while I dig up a dig video here? Um, ah, see what I did? Oh. I didn't even mean oh. to do that. I just oh, that's, you. that's a freebie. <laughs> that's horrible. Wow. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Uh, you know, I didn't play enough of the dig, to be honest. Like, I got through the very beginning part. Um, well, that's this is way too far, and I can't do this one. But th this is definitely, I I don't know. It's definitely more polished. Like, look at that. That artwork is really cool. And it was written by Orson Scott Card. Yes. Everyone's favorite crazy racist sci-fi author. <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> I I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> so did you feel like uh, playing this, that the, the dialogue, like you would expect that it was written by a famous author? Or did you? Dialogue hurt me many, many times. Um, it, it, the pacing of the delivery felt weird to me. Okay. In, in the dialogue. One of the best examples I have for the dialogue being all over the map. And you can tell, like, there's a solid premise under this. But the person writing the dialogue didn't fully understand that things can happen out of order. And so right. you get a lot of stuff that doesn't jive with itself. And so there's one scene pretty early in. This whole game was only about eight hours. Um, yeah, I feel that's an acceptable amount, but it was eight hours with me having spots. I didn't know how to get through right away. Um, you have one of your guys dig a hole and it, the ground collapses on him and he dies. And the other person's like, you immediately take guilt and responsibility because you're supposed to be the leader of this expedition. You're feeling really bad about it. Yeah. And so the other person's like, well, you know, it wasn't your fault. They volunteered to dig. It could have happened to anybody. We needed to do this. Anybody who did this would have been the one who died. So it's out of your hands. And then they go, well, I'm going to go off over here now on my own. And you're like, we can't split up. We're on an alien planet. We need... It's like, oh, well, keeping each other safe worked really well for him. I'm like, 30 seconds ago. Yeah, give were... me a break. <laughs> 
I had a sort of emotional whiplash with the yeah. woman in this game just back and forth. She's my friend. She hates me. She's my friend. She hates me. You start out antagonizing her. And then like yeah. by the end, I think it's a love interest. There was no pacing for the relationships in this game. They all. really beat you over the head too in the beginning of the game with her being a journalist. Like, Oh, I get it. Like I just, I don't want to hear any more jokes about her being a journalist. I think like, that was generous of you to call them jokes. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. I, you can tell there were a lot of times they were trying to be funny, but they weren't. This It just fell flat. This game completely lacks that LucasArts humor, and it's really too bad. Um, however, this came out in 1995. It was a bit further along in the LucasArts development, so it's got a lot of the solid LucasArts crafting behind it but yeah the dialogue just was painful and you can just so weird because you think like they like got a famous author to write this thing like why isn't it amazing because it was in um development hell for too many years this should have come oh. out around the time of the loom oh my and it really? basically so history of the game it started out as one of Spielberg's storyboard ideas for Amazing Stories, which was his 80s uh, sci-fi TV show he wanted to do. Or yeah. not wanted to do, he did. Which yeah. is okay if you can find it. It's, it's kind of, There's some good ones. Um, the one with the voodoo babysitter is my favorite. Nice. Um, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of scary for little kids. Um, which is when I watched it so good job <laughs> right. thanks mom and dad thanks mom and dad <laughs> um but he decided to do this on the show would be too expensive the irony of that is it took so long in game development which where he thought it would be cheaper that it was more expensive than if he had just done the show oh really which is huh. kind of too bad but um i think if they had done it as a show like this could be a show if you did it as like an hour or like a two or three part half hour mini series something like that. Um, I, I like I can, it. Yeah, as a, as a game because I think the artwork is so good. Like I think you would lose a lot if you made this into a show, in my opinion. Mm, it depends. I, I think with modern special effects, you could do it well. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But at the time, no, you wouldn't have done this justice. You you yeah, wouldn't have 80s, nailed the alien environments. Cuz it is so alien. Um It reminds me a lot of uh graphically it it's more akin to Full Throttle, which was their the LucasArts like biker mm -hmm. game. That's what the graphics reminded me of uh Here's a good example of what I was talking about, about this kind of puzzle, where this is just find pieces and fit them in slots. And even more annoying, like the slots are outlined for you. You don't even have to like think about how they fit together. You just got to find the pieces and put them together. Um, these, I'm moving my mouse like I can move the cursor. These little buttons next to the doors, you can kind of see... And again, you can't see me pointing at the screen, but right there, right? That, that, that. <laughs> Let's see if I go to one. Am I going to go to it? Yay, I do. There oh, you go. No. There you we go. Oh. This is an arbitrary puzzle. Yeah, like I don't I don't care for, for puzzles like that. And, and Loom didn't really have a lot of that, no. uh, which was great. But this, yeah, this is this a combination stuff. lock because reasons and what they do is they give you the combination on these sticks scattered about it's not even subtle and all you got to do is figure out which door it goes to and match the combination so you're not even puzzling anything out it's just a way to sort of like wall you in which in that case just make it a key just make me touch the lock with the stick and let me go in. Don't make me click through and you'd be like, right. click, 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 click. Oh, I missed it. Click, 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 click. Right. You're not getting anything out of it. Like you're, you're not 
your brain's not going to give you a dopamine for that. No, it's no. Like a, it's a bummer. If you want one where it's that kind of puzzle thing, you do one and you have it guard something really special, but not every single door. Um, yeah. So which game did you think was better, Loom or The Dig? Loom. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I didn't play a, a ton of The Dig, but even from, like, I liked... I like the beginning of the dig because they throw you right into the story mm -hmm. uh, or what could be the story. Like the, there's a comet heading for earth, et cetera. Right. Uh, so I like, I like that, but overall, like I thought loom was, was a better, more creative uh, game. I think dig had a more interesting sci-fi like i like where they were going with the story which is sort of death and resurrection and what is life that's the theme through the dig is when is something you know the the question of what does it mean to be human are you the light bulb or the light and hmm. that's the question that's asked and dig and explored and it, it's a really interesting thing to explore sometimes the game gets in the way of the story and this is kind of yeah. where I was saying, if it was a show, you could have explored that story better. Where yeah. you wouldn't have gotten necessarily the effects, but I don't know. Yeah, that seems like a theme with both the games then. Like that uh, that they're giving you a game tacked onto a world. Mm -hmm. I just think Loom did it better. Loom hid the game a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Loom, I mean, you like did he, have to think about it quite a bit, mm -hmm. you know. And and I liked that there were, I didn't even think that there were different ways to solve the puzzles, but. Yeah, some, cool. not many, some. Yeah. Um, I do have, like, some story issues. The ending's cheesy on the dig, by the way. The ending's super oh, really? cheesy. Super 80s cheese. Um, oh, my Worse than the ending to Loom? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it, it just sort of... <laughs> oh, since we're spoiling stuff... <laughs> yeah, just go for it. <laughs> it was honestly one of the funniest moments for me in the game, and it wasn't meant to be a joke. Um, so you've got... You've got your two people who come with you. And... By the end of the game, you've gotten both of them killed. So you manage to get off the... Basically bring back all the aliens, bring them back out of the sixth dimension. Uh, it's taking the concept that there's the three dimensions of space, and then there's also three dimensions of time. Um, hmm. And so they got lost within those three dimensions by exploring time. So you bring them back to this world... And they're able to then build you a ship to take home. And they're like, well, you know, since we can travel time, hang on a second. And they bop into the void again. The thing you just saved them from because they got lost in the multiverse. And pull your friends out of. So they pull the girl oh, and the other guy no. back. They bring them back. And the girl, this is where all of a sudden a romance plot that was never there appears out of nowhere. And she's, oh there's like this definite indication that you two are interested in each other. And... So you talk back and forth, back and forth, and you're like, oh, thank you for doing this. Oh, thank you for doing that. Da, 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 da. And then the other guy's like, and I'm here too. And I'm not paraphrasing. Those are his exact words. Like in the middle of the sentence, he's like, I'm here too. Wow. <laughs> awesome. I'm like, oh. That is, <laughs> Poor that's dude. such a cop out when, right. they un when they resurrect all the dead characters. I hate that. Like, yeah. oh. It's cheesy. It was really cheesy. It was I don't really need your feel goodery. Mm -mm. Yeah. I... And they don't show you going home with any of this. They're like, now go home and and tell people about you know what you've learned about life and and but they don't show you going home or dealing with any of that. You know, I yeah. th think it was meant to make more of an emotional impact on you than it did, and it doesn't. It just fails to deliver. Mm. Um, so would you recommend people play this? If you really like LucasArts games, yes. If you don't, if that's not, if you don't specifically like LucasArts games or you don't specifically like Spielberg, 
Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I don't recommend you play the dig. Wow. I don't recommend yeah. you stay away from it, but I don't recommend it. Um, yeah, I was kind of debating whether I was going to go back and play it because I've been playing Grim Fandango on kind of on my own mm-hmm. and, and really liking it. Like that's I think one of the best Lucas Arts games. Yeah. And I was like, well, maybe I'll like try to play all of these or more of these, but I don't know. Like I. For one, it didn't grab me at, no. at the get-go too much. It just felt weird, you know, yeah. poorly paced and such. Well, and I think it coming from a writer outside of LucasArts. It came from Spielberg, and it has a Spielberg touch to it, that that's what makes it feel like the black sheep of the game series. So it's yeah. not bad. It's just not like this door thing bugs me to no end. I- I'm bored just watching you do it. Yeah. Well, and this was a point where I hadn't found any of the sticks yet. So I'm seeing all these oh. doors and being like, all right, I've got no clue. And I couldn't find anywhere else to go right away. So, gotcha. um, so I was like, you know for... what? <laughs> There's only four gems. Click, 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 cycle, next, click. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna skip ahead here because people don't need – oh, I'm still doing it. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. I, I am Your not – Your commitment a... is – I am Amazing. not above it. Yep. <laughs> above it. Hey, good, good on you. There was a... This is completely unrelated, but there is a puzzle in Ultima 6 that has uh, a room with nine levers, three on each wall. And I couldn't find anywhere that told me how to set the levers. So I just turned them all down and was like, flip, 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 flip. flip. <laughs> I will I will find this. There's only so many combinations and I've got nothing better to do with my time. <laughs> did you do it? Like, I did. Were you successful? Yeah, I was successful wow. by just brute forcing that. So You're definitely more hardcore than me. Like, <laughs> if if I could if I couldn't like get past that, I probably would have just quit. Like and never played it again. Well, this was and this is one of the things to remember when we're talking about games from this era. A lot of these games got big because there was no other option. There right. wasn't anything else to play. So yeah, when I was in point. my early 20s and I had like I had my old Commodore games I could go back to and those were great, but otherwise I had my Super Nintendo Ultima 6. I'm going to play Ultima 6, I guess. You know, it's at least yeah. new. It's something different, and I don't have that many, especially when you're broke in your early twenties, right? right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like maybe they should, uh, they should ramp the games up on on Steam and like do do away with the summer sales, so people have to play stuff. <laughs> like, oh, you screw you, you kids! Game, you're not old enough to have more than ten games. <laughs> Your game of the month is the dig, and you're playing it. Yep. Like if you want to play a game, that's what you get. Well, and you'd commit because you're like, oh, you, you know, there's some sunk cost fallacy, but like, okay, I spent my money on this game. Yep. I'm, I'm seeing it through, which <laughs> I swore I wasn't going to bring it up, but that's why I finished Auto Duel. <laughs> yep, I totally get that. Yeah, like, yeah. I know. I'm. I guess we're doing it. We're. Doing auto do. Um, I'm going through my story issues on this. Who builds doors like this? Uh, <laughs> Good question. There's a couple scenes where this alien ghost shows you things, kind of leads you to the next spot. But the moment there's like a really important key item, so he's leading you through to get you to see, make sure you're the people required. Can you follow these clues to get to this point? You're like, okay, well, we need one more thing to do the thing you sort of brought us here to do. No, it's too dangerous. Thanks. Really? Now we've decided it's too dangerous? Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess I'll go home. Yeah. Can you send me home? No, we can't do that die. either. Yeah. All right, then, asshole, what's the point? What? What? <laughs> and I this had... does, like, reek of Steven Spielberg, though. Like, this whole thing. It does. It's, it's really spielberg yeah if you like spielberg you'll you'll get something out of this if you don't you won't um and then i my questions were like why is the ghost a ghost how are the ghosts working because nothing else gets to be a ghost so 
I had some huge questions about that and, and never really got an answer. And then my question was like, if you didn't think we could save you, why did you capture us? It implies that what ha maybe the ship was on autopilot. I mean, I didn't have to push the buttons, but why did it come to Earth? What? There's so many questions I have about the conceit to this game of what was the premise? What what started this? And it's never answered. It's never explained. It's just dumb luck, maybe, or we're not mm. supposed to think about it. Yeah. Did you get to do the turtle puzzle? Um, Apparently not. No, I don't. You know so. what I was talking about. It's my favorite puzzle in the game. It's the one puzzle they got right. Hmm. So there's this one area where there's some water and the sea monster comes out and eats a turtle and then spits out the bones and shell. Mm -hmm. And you can use the goo to try and resurrect the turtle. But the bones are all scattered, so like if you do it without doing anything to it, it just sort of like blah, comes back as a turtle shape for a second and then melts away. So cool. you've got to rebuild it. You've got to go and arrange the bones so that it's turtle shaped. Mm -hmm. And then you do that, and the same thing happens. The monster comes out and eats it and puts it back. There's another place where you see like here's this alien device. It's a bomb. Like this is a this is used to make things blow up. Mm -hmm. And without telling me, I knew what I had to do. I didn't know why I had to do it. I just knew in the game I've got to build the turtle, stick the bomb in it, bring it back, the thing will eat it and blow up. Yep. It's the one thing that felt nat it's the one puzzle that felt natural. Like not yeah. deliberately just a puzzle. This was something that like, okay, here's how the game world mechanics work. They show me how the game world mechanics work, and then I'm left to figure out how to use those mechanics to move forward. Yeah, which That's was classic LucasArts logic. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen anywhere else in the game. Yeah. It really doesn't. Uh, not on that level. There's a couple little things, but nothing... Nothing really on the level where you're pulling stuff from different screens. That was something else I wanted to talk about both these games. Coming off Dark Lord. Hmm. There was no need to map. Right. Yeah. That is interesting. Like the the layouts are pretty simplistic. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least Loom, they were really, you know, beautiful and, and deep. But yeah. yeah, you're right. You like you know there's two two screens you can go to from this one and yep. that's it yeah and it, it's sort of like this is the hub area and then you go over here and you solve this set of puzzles you go over here and you solve this set of puzzles yeah and each one has a small set of puzzles and small set of rooms attached to it but you're not it doesn't give you the feel of a pervasive world it doesn't give you the feel of that like you don't need a yeah. map to figure out where something else might be where right. in things like Dark Lord, I could see like, oh, if I go here and then I can follow the water around and this should lead me back here. And... Yeah, you don't feel like you're exploring very much. Mm -mm. No, there's no exploration here. It's look at this pretty picture, look at this pretty picture. Where in Dark Lord, I felt like I was exploring. And Yeah, that's a really good point. All the LucasArts games are like that, but some, yeah. sometimes the later ones are big enough where you, mm -hmm. you can't find new stuff and you get a little bit of that. But yeah, at least Loom... And what I played of the dig seemed pretty confined, yeah. you know. If you want something that splits the difference between a LucasArts game and something like the dig, you need to go to the Sierra Adventure games. Yes, yeah, we should do some of those sometime. We will, because <laughs> Quest yeah. for Glory is really good. Yes, and, that was my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Space Quest and King's Quest are both good. I, King's yeah. Quest, not as much, is okay. Uh, it got better, but it also had nine games. Yeah, so there were a lot of those. It had room to get better. <laughs> Although, Quest for Glory, do you know how many games it had? Four? Five. Oh, really? Right? I know. I always think, like, three. And then I'm like, wait, there was four. And I'm like, no, wait, there was there was a fifth one that came out way late that no one, no one got. Maybe we should play that one. Maybe. <laughs> or the first one. Soon. Yeah. Uh, I know what we're doing next month already, and I know we're both yeah. super excited about it. Me too. I have been. It's it's 
It's Mech Warrior Two. It's Mech Warrior Two. It's... I have a lot of my life hours logged in Mech Warrior Two. Yep. I'm excited about I'm it. Just put that up on the screen now. Mech Warrior Two. Boop. Um. Anything else you want to say about either of these games? Uh, no, not really. Like I, I think this whole the whole series of Lucas Arts games is worth looking into. You could probably find one that, you know, they all have kind of a mood, so you can find find one that, you know, appeals to you. And right. Give it a shot and have fun. Uh, Monkey Island, good one. Uh, Grim yep. Fandango, good one. Um, full Throttle. Full Throttle is a good one. Uh, Sam and Max. Yep, Sam and Max is a lot of fun. Uh, Indiana Jones, Fate of Atlantis. Like we can keep going down. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. And there's the thing. Like, would I recommend the dig? No. If you played the dig, would you have a bad time? No. You'd have a good time. You. It's yeah. it's okay. My daughter is loves the dig. Like yeah. she talks to me about it. She's like, so why did that guy steal our stuff? And and it somehow locked into something in her that she really got into it just didn't do it for me it just yeah. didn't do it for me yeah that's how i guess a lot of these games are mm -hmm. but in both games uh the thing i like about lucas hertz is sort of the same thing i don't like about their games you can't fail yeah you can only give up you, yep you aren't gonna die you aren't gonna lose your guy we're like with the sierra games you can die you can have something oh, yeah. happen and your guy's gone you gotta reload or go back in yep. time LucasArts doesn't have that mentality. All right. Yeah. That's I all say, I got. Yeah, they were short games, so there's not much else to throw at them. Yeah. And next month will be MechWarrior. Awesome. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.